till vacuum do us part and welcome to 2020. I'm so excited to see where year three on YouTube is going to take us together. Um, if you're new here, my name is Ashley. I would love for you to subscribe and join my family here today. I'm going to be giving you some cleaning motivation and some cleaning tips. I thought it would be fun to add some tips in there as well. So let's get straight into cleaning. So the first place we're going to start off is in my guest bathroom and I want to talk about um, a fabric shower liner. I feel like this is such a good investment and when I say investment they're not that much. I'll link one in my Amazon store down below so just click on that link. But it just saves you money and it's less plastic in your house. You don't have that plastic smell. When it gets dirty I just throw it in the washer and dryer and then when your company comes over it feels more like a hotel or a nice spa. It's not just plastic in there. So definitely look into to fabric shower liners. My shower liner had gotten really dirty. I didn't realize my curtain rod had dropped a little bit so you could tell it was like soaking in the water. So what's nice, I don't have to replace it. I don't have to spend money on plastic or one that's just gonna get thrown away. This is better for our earth. I just grab my shout and I spray it at the bottom and then you'll see me just throw it in the washer and then later I'll throw it in the dryer. I'll show you here in a second the products I'm using. They're just from Sam's Clubs. They are nothing special. It's just their laundry soap and their fabric softener and then I just use shout and I do put it in like an old method container with a label just so it looks prettier. Okay, now I'm gonna head back into my guest bathroom. This is a fun tip that a sweet subscriber told me about. So this is what normally my toilet paper looks like. It's fine, but you can actually step it up one notch and stamp your toilet paper. So I've always been one to fold it when it's on the roll for my guests. I don't do it in my bathroom all that much, but I'm gonna show you how. Just on your little roll, you just fold in the edges and it makes this V. It's almost like you're wrapping a present and I would always hang that on the paper towel roll or the toilet paper paper roll and it was just nice and pretty but then a subscriber taught me that you turn on the water faucet for a second and then you put the toilet paper roll underneath it like right where the V meets and you hold it for three seconds and it makes this perfect little stamp and what's so cool is every faucet kind of has a different design so you'll have to try it and see what yours looks like but I just think this is a fun thing to do for a guest bathroom with people coming over it's just that extra special touch obviously you don't have to do it but it's just fun and something different Okay, now we're gonna go to the other side of the house, which is my laundry room. Chase was so sweet when we came home from Sam's. He put my paper towel rolls away for me. And when I walked in there, I just started cracking up because if you guys know me, this is not gonna fly. That is way too much color. So my tip is, Okay, all, I'm not going to take all of these out of plastic because obviously I don't want them to get dusty and dirty, but the ones that aren't going to be on display, so I put a lot just right there at the top of my cabinets. You really don't notice them and you just see the white part, but all the ones that are going to be out where you can see, I'm going to go ahead and take all the wrapping off. So I do this in a lot of areas of my house. I do this in my kitchen. If you will start taking stuff out of the packaging, it looks so much nicer and neater, and then you can use those items more as decor versus having to buy some. So you're going to see me open these up and then stack them back up there. And it's just such a huge difference between it up there in the plastic and up there, just the nice clean white look. Okay, and another tip if you're like, oh no, I want up my plastic, I don't want to open like that, just make sure when you stack it up, kind of make them all face the same direction and where the outside's the same print. That way it still looks more uniformed and it looks like you did it on purpose and it's less messy, but the way it was up there were some were forward, some were upside down. Just kind of be more aware how you're putting things away. And then when you walk into the space, I promise you it feels so much better. So 
So here's the final look and you have to agree when you walk into the space, it's just so much more calming. It looks like it's done on purpose and it looks like nice decor when it's actually just my supplies that I have for around the house. So just taking a few extra moments and working on stuff like that really does make an impact. Now we're going to talk about pillows and we're going to talk about tags. So my first tip is when you first buy pillows, do not take the tags off because you might want to keep them for a few days. Sometimes I change my mind. Sometimes I end up redecorating. So make sure to leave all the tags on until you're 100%. And then after that, take every tag off. I know there's even a tag that says, do not remove this, remove it. If you're keeping it, that's just something that you don't want to keep tucking every time you're putting them up. It looks cheap and just not well put together if there's tags sticking out. So be sure once you're 100% get all those tags off and then you're not hiding those tags every time you're moving them or they're itchy when you're laying on them. So that was my next tip. I had bought pillows about a week ago, so that's why I have so many tags that I'm removing. And I'm so thankful that I left them on because I kept some pillows for about two or three days and decided I did not like it or they weren't worth the money. And they were actually $30 each. So that was $60 I got to return and get my money back versus if I had cut those tags, I would have been stuck with them or I had to resell them and I would never have made that money back. So definitely keep tags on things just for a few days. Hold on to your receipts. I know this isn't a cleaning tip, but it'll definitely save you money. Now let's talk about dusting. I think a lot of people go wrong when they're dusting because they don't dry dust first. So get a dry rag out and dust off any of that loose stuff that you can. If you go straight in with a liquid or wet rag, it just starts to like gum up and get sticky or smudgy. So definitely just take like a dusting rag that's dry, wipe it off, and then you can go in with the wet rag. This works with lights, fans, toilets, basically anything that gets dusty. Here's a quick look at my rag when I was done dusting. So if I wouldn't have used that first and just used straight like liquid or something on it, I would have been smearing all of that into the light and then it just kind of gets streaky. So that's why you definitely need to like dry dust first. Right after I dust a space that's up high, I like to clean whatever's below it. So if it's a fan, I clean my bed. If it's just the floor, I vacuum. In this case, it's my island. So I wanna go ahead and wipe it down really well because any of that dust that my rag didn't catch fell down below. Plus, in this case, I was actually standing on my island so that I could reach it. So it's just an idea, or good idea, to go ahead and get it clean right afterwards. Okay, and my next cleaning tip is my favorite cleaning tip. You guys hear it all the time, but everything needs a home. If it doesn't have a home in your house, you need to get rid of it or get rid of something else. That way, when you go to clean, you're not like, oh, I don't have a place to put it or I'll just cram it over here. I'm gonna show you into a few spaces of my house so you can just kind of see how everything has a home, everything has a place. And if it, there's no room for it, I either need to get rid of that item or another item for it. So I know this is hard and this takes time, but once it's done, it makes cleaning so easy. It means people can help you because it's very clear where your items belong and where they go. And like I mentioned, when you don't have a place for things, it just starts to stack up like in a catch-all space or a dining room. So definitely just start going through your space this entire year. It doesn't have to get done in one day. Work on one room at a time or one space at a time. And I promise you, you will not regret it. So you think you were right? Mm -hmm. Bring it up, bring it up, boom.
Okay, now let's talk about dog hair. Um, both of my dogs aren't supposed to shed right now. George may shed a little bit, but as of right now, he's just losing his puppy coat, so he's shedding. So if you have a dog that sheds, I totally feel your pain. One of my biggest tips I can give you is brush them daily, and it just takes a few minutes if you'll do it every single day, and then you're getting that fur on the brush and in that area versus all over your furniture or your clothes, so definitely take the time and brush your dogs daily. Tip number two when it comes to dog hair, give them a special blanket to lay on. So when I put a blanket here, both of my dogs are attracted to it and they always wanna sit on it. And then their fur or smell or whatever it is stays on that blanket and I can wash that blanket as needed, but it's not on my actual sofa. So that's not smelling and getting dirty. So definitely just work on tips like that that are helpful. Now let's talk about smell because I always get tons of questions on how I make my house smell good and I get headaches really easy so I have to be really careful with the products that I use for smell. So the first one I use is my diffuser and essential oils and I know a lot of you guys do not like those since I have pets but you can do your research. Not all oils are bad for pets and trust me those wall plugins are way worse with the fake like fragrances than my oils. So I just pour in some oil into the diffuser. This one's lemon that I'm using currently. I just feel like it's a nice, clean, fresh scent. So I drop that in, turn it on, and that'll make the whole room and living room smell amazing. Another way that I liked to make my home smell good is non-toxic candles. So this is anything to use with beeswax or essential oils. You can find them on Etsy. I look in Ross and I'll just read all the labels to make sure they're nice and healthy. Another way is real plants. They help with the air and getting bad odors out. So those are all pretty safe ways that you can use um, just to take your, the smell out of the house and make sure it smells nice and pretty. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the vacuum. I get questions all the time how I clean out my vacuum. So you're gonna see real fast, it had been a while, this is gross. Um, so first off, I pull out as much as I can and then I like to save old pens that have like run out of ink and I can put it up in there and kind of swirl around and it loosens it up. You can see it starts to pull that down and since it's an old pen anyways, when I'm done, I chunk it <laughs> and then you're going to see me wash my hands and then I have one more tip about the vacuum. Okay, now I'm gonna open it up and get the filter out. Um, this will be different on every vacuum. I always get asked what vacuum I use. This is the LG cordless. Now you can go ahead and just wash out that filter when you have time and let it air dry, but I'm not gonna do that today. But a subscriber told me to put in a oil into that. And oh my goodness, when you have a pet, this is a huge lifesaver because sometimes your vacuum will start to smell like pets or dogs. And when you vacuum, it makes your house smell that way. And as soon as you add that oil, Oil, it makes the room smell amazing. So I'm using the lemon one again just to make it smell fresh and clean. This makes the whole house smell amazing. It lingers. It makes your vacuum smell better, your house smell better. I highly suggest getting an oil even if you don't love them just for your vacuum. I don't know how many times I've vacuumed my house like an hour before people come over or didn't vacuum because I didn't want to do it right before they came in because I was always curious like if my vacuum had that smell. Now I want to vacuum before they come over because it just puts that fresh scent out immediately like I said and lingers. So I can, this is like one of my favorite tips when it comes to like vacuum and making your house smell good. It is so easy to do and so simple and that will last for a while. So it's not just that one time you vacuum when I go in and use it the next few days, that oil is still in that filter. So super easy, easy tip. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you enjoyed all the tips. I hope you have a wonderful 2020 and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. 
Zip it. Tiger, no. Hello and welcome back to Till Vacuum Do Us Part and welcome to 2020. We're gonna have so much fun. Just, oh. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Till Vacuum Do Us Part. <laughs> Uh, I know the trash man's here. He's gone. Say bye. <laughs> Mommy's gotta work. <laughs> Hold on. Hey. <laughs> Tiger, come here. Be good. Okay. Stay with you, George. Be fine. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you enjoyed all the tips. I hope you have a wonderful 2020 and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.